Here we go. Okay. Um, so on your test, I don't think they're going to have, they're not going to have that app right on their desk. We'll have to do this. Yeah. No. No, you're not. So I talked to your, you talked to your calculus teacher, and he said you're definitely not getting the decimals app. Okay, so when I start to do my graph, the first thing I'm going to do is my axis. What's my axis on my graph, please? So we can just shout out, what's my axis? Uh oh, vertical shift, I mean, vertical shift. What's the vertical shift? Launching it up. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little dotted line down the middle. This is my axis. So I get a second person to tell me, please, what the amplitude is and what that helps tell me from my equation. Goes up three and down three. I hope I heard somebody say perfect. Okay, so that is exactly what it is. So up to four, down to four. So there's max, and there's min. Okay, what's my period, please? Four. Four? Okay, though it is not five over two. The period is this. This is why they gave it to us here. Okay, so what's going to happen is I'm going to count by fours. Like this. What's my phase shift? One to the right. Okay, so this means my graph starts here. Okay, so this is sine of cos. Sine. Sine starts where? Zero is incorrect. So this is the axis. This is the correct mathematical term to be using. All right, it starts in the middle. So I'm going to start my first point. It's going to be here. It repeats every four, so where's the next time it's going to be here? What's the end of the cycle? It's going to be where then? Five. Five, okay? There's something called quarter points or action points. That means when the graphs get interesting and things happen for them. So for this every one, something needs to happen. When I go over to the one, where's the next point going to be? Is it going to be a four or is it going to be a negative two? What part is this? Oh, sorry, if you're okay with how I did this one, period. Just the idea you split it in four, then. That's how you get. If you take a look at any of your any of your graphs, and if you do from zero to two pi, if you divide it by four, that's what you get from the top and middle to the bottom. We call it quarter points or action points, whatever. Um, and then we go down to zero, then we go down to negative one, and there's your graph. Okay, now if your teacher shows you to do it differently, that's fine. Okay, right, but that's the easiest way to graph these. Can I have a closed eyes for one quick sec? Who had to do this unit by independent study last year? Who had to do this unit by independent study last year? Okay, I'll be able to open your eyes now. Because um, all this should be reviewed that you're doing on the board for grade 11. Like solving these equations is all reviewed from grade 11. Grasping this is all reviewed from grade 11. The only, one sec, the only difference is in grade 12, there's radians. That's the only difference. Okay, so we'll get through it. Don't worry, we'll get through it. Right now. Yes. Yes. I think my question is It's how did you get? How did you get the? Okay. So what happens is here. Basically, what happened? I'll show this in a second when I get to the unit circle. Okay. But if you have, if you go back to the circle here, okay, because the circle is everything. This is the starting point here, right? So this is the axis. This is the max. This is your axis. This is your min. I'll get to show this in a little bit, okay? So the idea is every 90 degrees, no, it's 360, every 90 degrees you go to your max, then you go to your axis, then you go to your min, then you go back to your axis. But if you take a look, the entire cycle is 360 degrees, and divided by 4, everything interesting happens. So your period is always going to be divided by 4, and that's what every single square is going to be on the graph. Okay? Yeah? Should the mean be Should be what's going on? All right, I'm going to go into special triangles because you need special. Oh, sorry, go ahead. Um, I'm just wondering, like, um, for the x point, like when yeah. you're plotting your attributes, how do you know? It's just, like, not like how high and how low, but like across. Like, it's it's you know? one quarter of what your period is. It's, it's always one quarter of your period. And that's, yeah. So in this how case, our period was four. So that's just how it goes because if you think of a circle oh, going around there, one quarter, two quarters, three quarters. So you four. always you always divide all your yeah. yeah. Okay, I'm going to move ahead here, guys, because I want to keep going. If you know your special triangles, feel free to tune me out. But no offense, people don't know their special triangles. You need the special triangles to get the unit circle down. 
and talking to your, some of you students, I know you don't have any idea what's going on in the inner circle, okay? So I'm going to slowly teach that. Let's start with the special triangles. If you don't know these proofs, you should know these proofs, okay? I'm going to start with my 45, 45, 90 triangle, and then we'll change it to a, uh, no, then we'll change it to a pi by 4, pi by Five by four, five by four, five by two. Okay, does anyone know the proof for this? The eleven? No, no problem. Okay, I'm going to start with the square. This proof is very easy. It's a geometric proof. Squares all four sides to be the same. I'm going to call them all one. Okay. Then I'm going to chop it in half, sort of like this. Okay, so that's going to give me a nice triangle that looks like this. Now, Rachel Cassidy, yeah. if I chop a 90 degree angle in two, what are my angles going to be then? 45, 45. 45 and 45, exactly. Mm -hmm. And that distance is going to be one, and that distance is going to be one. How am I going to solve what the hypotenuse is? Okay. Thing, whoever said it is awesome. Okay, so what I'm going to call that x for right now, I'm going to say x squared equals 1 squared plus 1 squared, x squared equals 1 plus 1 x squared equals 2, x equals root 2. So my official triangle looks something like this. That's pi by 4. That's a right angle. That's pi by 4. That's root 2. That's 1. That's 1. If you already know to come that up in your head or you have it memorized, great. Okay, but if not, this is a good thing. Even me as a teacher, I don't have my other triangle memorized. This one I've memorized, but I still got to do the little proof. It's just a little sketch. It took me about literally... 10 seconds, you guys should be able to do this in, right? Now, can somebody tell me why the heck I care about special triangles? Why is this little, sorry? Good, but why? Can it help you with the circle? Yes, but what, what can this give me? What, can, what will this give me always? Uh, so, uh, <laughs> so I can tell it's right, but what I will, I can figure out what this angle, that angle is also. Sine of pi by four, which is sine of 45 if you like degrees. Can someone use Sokotoa and tell me what sine of pi by 4 is? So if I'm using this angle right here, what is sine of pi by 4? What does so stand for again? 1 over 5 over 2. I ever said that. That's correct. Okay. I'll show my work. I'm sorry. So this is opposite. And that's hypotenuse. That's 1 over root 2. Okay, does that make sense where that came from? Uh, I don't know. I'm just going to get you guys into used to using these because I'm just because that's what calculus has to use. I'm uh, preparing you for that. I talked to Mr. Kemp today. He said that you know circle sheet, you let her know over count like that was memorized. And I'm sorry to be the bad there of bad news. But he told me that we have to know it for next semester. Okay. So anyway, I'm gonna show you how to learn it like this. Like once you get it, once you understand it, and that's the problem why I hate with giving those sheets because you just sort of randomly write down the numbers and have no idea where they came from. So this will hopefully explain it to you. Okay, with that knowledge, I'm gonna pick on my top one of my top two uh, Tim Horton girls. Sorry if anyone else works with Tim Hortons, okay? Magenta. Yeah. Can you show me, please, what cos of pi over 4, please? What is cos equal, please? Back in grade 10 or 11. Uh, ka. C-A-H. So, ka, to oh. C-A-H. Adjacent over hypotenuse. Okay. okay, good. Somebody help her? What's adjacent over hypotenuse in this case? One over root two. And finally, we're going to do tan of pi over four. I'll save you guys. This is going to be opposite over adjacent, which is just equal to one. Okay, is this sort of helpful at all? What does that do? What, what this shows you perfect values. When you get to university, you're not going to use a calculator. But this is going to help us show the shapes of where the graphs come from. And things like that. Like this will help us get all our graphs. Like right now, I'm gonna say this Desmos should be used when you're a master of graphs, not a step one. Does that make sense? 
Okay, right? So Desmos is okay to check your work, but you might be able to do all the grunt work yourself. So that makes sense. Yeah, go ahead. Are you doing this from like behind the table? So like when you're doing the adjacent No, it's compared to this one. Sorry, I should have said that. Um, okay, so this is um, you pick whatever angle you're going to use. So what I'm going to do is so what I'm going to do on the next one. Does that make sense now, right? Okay, I'm going to give you guys on account to about 10 in my head. I'm not on enough time to get through this today. I'm going to give you as much as I can. I'm going to do the same thing with the 3069 triangle. Are you ready? Is everyone almost scribbled? This will be online tonight, don't worry, okay? So if you're not quite there, you can scribble it down tonight. 3069 triangle. Now, this is a beautiful proof. And I came for this one myself. I shouldn't say that. I'm, I'm sure I got it somewhere else, but I remember it myself. Where in life have you seen a 60 degree angle before? What type of triangle has to have a 60 degree angle? Equilateral. Uh, it is equilateral. You're close though, okay? So an equilateral triangle has two things the same. Hold on, please. Guys, let's go, please. So we're going to have 60, 60, 60. And all three sides are going to be the same, right? That's what an equilateral triangle has. I'm going to call each side two because it's different this time. So I want to get a 30 degree angle. Someone use their brains. How do I get a 30 degree angle? Right down the middle. That's exactly what we're going to do. Very good. So I'm going to put this right down the middle sort of like this. And my triangle now is going to be 30, 60, 90, and that's 2. All right, if someone with a neutral capacity here, tell me what the bottom length is going to be and why. One. One. How'd you get one? What do I do? This is why we did two to start with, right? And this is going to be x. Can somebody tell me how to find x, please? Very good again, okay? So it's going to be 2 squared equals x squared plus 1 squared, or equals x squared plus 1, 3 equals x squared, and x equals root 3. So here's my big triangle, that's pi over 6, that's pi over 3, I think, and that's that. So there's 2, 1, root 3. Now even for me as your teacher, as well as your former teacher, I have um, got my two numbers mixed up. I know my hypotenuse is 2, but I can never remember what goes with what, even as a 39-year-old adult. So I have to do this little proof on the top of the page, which is okay. Like it takes not, once you do it, it takes like 5 seconds to... Okay, we can get lots of information from this triangle. I'm going to start with this angle right here in red, and I'm going to do sine of pi by 6, which is 30 degrees. Cos of pi by 6. Did you just switch the angles and make sense for you? Yes, because we're in advanced functions and we have to use radians. Are you going to switch the other ones? What's that? Like the outside? No, because the only thing that's radians is that's the angle. Radians. Mean the same thing. Okay. okay, sine equals what again in English? So opposite over hypotenuse, so 1 over 2. Which is cool. Cosine is going to be adjacent over hypotenuse, so root 3 over 2. And it's going to be opposite over adjacent. Does it matter if you do pi over 6 or pi over 3? Yes, it does. Because they're different. Because here's the thing if you choose pi over 3, this is going to be your opposite side now, right? Versus pi over 6, that's your opposite side. Oh. So it's going to be slightly different numbers based on the angle. So do you always use the angle? I'm going to use them both. I'm going to use pi over 3 now as well. This is a special, this is a super trying to get double the information out of it. What about? The 45, because the 45s are the same, it doesn't matter. I'm going to quickly do this one here right now in black. It's going to say sine of pi by 3 is opposite over hypotenuse. Is root 3 over 2. Cos of pi over 3 is adjacent over hypotenuse. Is 1 half. And tan of pi over 3 equals opposite over adjacent equals root 3. Okay, what does that fall? Did I ever tell you that I'm also suspicious to you? Let me tell a quick joke and then I'll go down my other time. 
the, the, uh, my chair was like this in my other classroom, and my co-op student was sitting right where we were. And I'm going, yeah, class, math is wonderful, yeah, math is great, math is wonderful, math is great. And I go, whoops. And I go, whoa, 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 whoa. And you want to talk about fear in the student's eyes? Like she thought she was going to be put in, but she thought she was going to be So luckily she wasn't, so luckily we're okay. All right, all things aside here now. If in life you see a pi over 3, a pi over 6, or a pi over 4, or a multiple of those, the answer has to be in fraction or root 3 over 2, or you know what I mean, in radical form. Okay, if you, if you tell your teacher that sine of pi over 3 is 0 0.866, you will get this. There's a slap on the rest. That's what that is. Depending on who your teacher is, if you're a lady mean teacher like Mr. Town, you will lose it on you probably for that, okay? Take off marks. <laughs> Are you terrified? Yeah, I don't need to terrify you. <laughs> what happened? Oh, you can hear me, Nerman. Okay. So those are my two triangles. I'm going to leave those to right now. I'm going to keep moving here. I'll talk with the unit circle. Now, this again is a grade 10 concept, which apparently no one got in grade 10, but a grade 11 concept that no one got in grade 11. Okay, so you're going to draw for me, if you would, the lovely unit circle. And you're going to put a point somewhere. Can you stay with me here, girls? Please stay with me here, please. I should be sleeping right now, so stay with me. Okay, I'm going to help you guys. Please love that. Okay. Um, you're going to pick a point somewhere on the circle in the first quadrant. It doesn't matter where. And you're just going to call it coordinates x, comma, y. All right? We're going to zoom in here, if that's all right. And I'm going to make a lovely triangle. Oh. Sorry? And I'm going to show you guys how the entire circle works right now. Oh, so do you think that's best we don't work here in the classroom? No, definitely not. <laughs> Stay with me here, please. Okay, okay. okay. Now, if this is point x, comma, y, what is my left and right value going to be called? Don't stop there. Well, if this is x, comma, y, this is going to be like your y value, and that's going to be your x value. Right? Are we okay? feeling okay on that? Okay, we're going to go all the way back. You know, this is very important. So if you are fading out, this is the crux of today's lesson. This, this, will, this will show you how all the corners work. This will show you how the graphs work. This will show you how everything works. This is the most important thing. Stop, stop, stop. Let's go. I'm asking for a question. No matter where you put the x and y. No. So I can put the one on the bottom. No, y has to go. Why well, has to go like this is the x values right here, right? Okay, so x is always adjacent. Okay, so here we go. I'm going to say sine of theta. Can I get somebody, please, other than Kai? Hold on a sec. I'm going to pick someone other than Kai to tell me, please, what sine of theta equals in English. Play along, please. So, over. Very good. What is the opposite in this graph? And my hypotenuse is going to be 1, because this is a unit circle, so the radius is 1. So you know what we just proved? Hopefully you knew this already, that sine of theta is the y value on the unit circle. Pardon? So sine is going to be the y values on the unit circle. And this is going to help you show you where the graphs come from and where the unit circle comes from. Okay, so whenever you're thinking of sine, that's where it comes from the y value on the circle. So when I go over here, sine is going to be how high you're getting. If you're down here, it's going to be how low it's getting. And that gets in the cast and all that stuff, too. Can I get somebody please to do the same thing with cos for me, please? Cos is... Cos is a JSON uh, okay. Great. So therefore, cos theta is the x value on the unit circle. They're doing unit 10 as well. Oh, unit 10? Why? Well, because for... Because the, the reason is, have you ever noticed that tan can have a value of like 15 or negative 3, and sine and cos only have to go between 1 and negative 1? Have you ever noticed that? Yeah. If you take a look here, though, the reason sine can only go between 1 and negative 1, and sine is the y value, is the biggest y value is 1, the smallest y value is negative 1. Same for the x values, the biggest x value is 1, the smallest x value is negative 1. Okay. And is something totally different. 
opposite over adjacent, which is y over x. Going back to grade nine, what is delta y over delta x, please? Back to grade nine. Smoke. Therefore, tan is the slope. And that makes sense, because you think of how tan works, you could have, stay, here, stay with me please, stay with me please. If you have a value up here, that would be an asymptote, right? That's an impossible slope. Okay, so if you do tan of 90 degrees, it's going to give you an error, because that's a slope. If you do tan of 89 degrees, you have a value of like 22 or something, because your slope's going to be very, very high. Do I need to do Castrol as well? I'm not yet. Let's do Castrol after, okay? I know what that is. Yeah. Let's do where the graphs come from, and then we'll do where the unit circle comes from, and then we'll do Castro. Yeah. Yeah. We can do it, don't worry. Yeah. 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 What? Yeah. Zero four, we can do it. Okay, so remember. Okay, so I'm going to show you where the unit circle helps us out a great deal. At zero degrees, what's a coordinate point at zero degrees? What comma what? Nope. Oh. Over here, one comma zero. What that means for us as a graph? Uh, that's going to be one. That's going to be negative one. Okay. So we said sine is equal to the y value. What's the y value at zero degrees? Zero, which we know. And then cos is going to be one. Okay, at pi by 4, which is 90 degrees, what's the coordinate point at pi by 4, which is 90? Zero, Zero comma 1. Okay. So what that means is your x value, which is cos, is 0. Excuse me, would Brooks Senate please come to the office? Brooks Senate to the office, please. And your sign value goes up with 1. Are we following where those points are coming from? Mm -hmm. Right, so that's the whole idea why this unit circle is helpful to us. This over here is negative 1 comma 0, oh. which means that your cos value is down to negative 1, and your sine value is over 0. Did you just pass a weapon in this classroom? Yes, it's a, it's a Stay with it. Let me refocus here. And finally, this is 0 comma negative 1, which means cos is up to 0. The y is over to negative 1, and then up to here, up to here. This, this is where these graphs actually come from. Okay? You can get those graphs from the circle. We're not quite done yet. We're getting close. Maybe I'll, did you guys ever test on the circle? Yeah. I actually understand now. I don't. Do you actually know yeah. because we haven't, yeah. because we haven't actually gotten to like where the actual points are. I think the, 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 only, the only thing that I didn't understand is how literally how the unit circle related to the graphs at all. Because like, I didn't understand the unit circle, I still don't understand the unit circle. Yeah, basically that's what it is, right? So you can, I'm not sure what they're doing anymore. Yeah. This is, sorry, I should have said here, this is cosine, and this is sine. But I got those points first. Okay, I'm going to just take one little break here, guys. I want to show you one video. And if you have nothing to do tonight and you want to sleep, other than watching...